Hi guys, uh, I've previously made a video on the three types of satellite images that are available to the mariners and in that I discussed uh, the visible satellite image and the infrared satellite image as well as the water vapor images. Uh, but I wanted to make one more video where I wanted to show you more about what the infrared satellite image is and what do they look like and how do they indicate the weather patterns. Uh, so you have uh, probably seen a mean sea level analysis chart and maybe are used to that uh, but you may not be used to an infrared satellite image so in that case I wanted to make a more detailed video on the topic because I I want to keep my videos short but at the same time I want you guys to have more access to um, and the knowledge associated with every concept. So I talked about the visible images uh, which basically show the visible light scattered or reflected towards the satellite from the earth and clouds. Uh, the basis of uh, the visible images is that the intensity of the image depends upon the albedo or the reflectivity of the underlying surface or cloud. In that regard, I wanted to show you an example of a chart as well as what an albedo is and what are the albedo values of uh, different uh, different uh, land features or uh, features. So the albedo from land ranges between 10% and 30% and ex except for snow covered surfaces as you can see here, I have shown you uh, the albedo values of uh, each of the surfaces here. So the albedo of snow covered surfaces is much higher. So albedo is reflectivity. Uh, clouds albedo is generally high, but it varies with its thickness and the composition of the cloud. So using a black and white color scale, the visible images actually show the brightest and most reflective surfaces in white tones and uh, least reflective surfaces in black. So water has a low albedo and so it appears very dark and thick clouds have high albedo and show up bright in the image. So thin uh, space clouds have low albedo and are usually semi-transparent to sunlight. So in this case, uh, visible images are only available during the daytime. Now in comparison, I wanted to show you a lot more about infrared images and that is why the topic for this video is infrared images because infrared images are based upon the measurement of the temperature of the earth's surface and clouds. So when infrared images are presented in black and white, they are consistent with the visible images in that, uh, that clouds appear in whiter shades against the darker background of the earth. Now clouds are usually colder than the earth's surface. So the temperature of the clouds also indicates how tall they are since temperature is inversely proportional to height in the atmosphere. So higher you go up, the lower the temperature starts to fall. Uh, hence, uh, if you have warm clouds uh, in the infrared image, they show up in gray. Uh, cool clouds appear whiter in infrared images and very cold clouds, they appear bright white. As I'll show you, I'll show you in some of the images and that is what I missed in the last video. I should have shown you these images. So the colder the cloud, of course, the more likely it is to produce rain. So if you see very white images on your weather maps, you can you can get an indication of that it's going to be rain. Uh, in the absence of clouds, the satellites measure the temperature of the land or ocean. So since uh, in the infrared image, the warmer temperatures are dark and the colder temperatures are lighter, uh, hot regions or warm regions appear dark while cooler, higher regions, they appear much brighter on the infrared chart or infrared maps or infrared images. Uh, as I'll show you, and I talked about this before, that infrared images, unlike visible images, you can also get them sometimes in colors. And this is issued by a certain Bureau of Metrology, uh, where the, uh, the colors indicate the different temperatures of the surfaces. Now what these are some of the images I missed to show you last time. You can see here, although these images are not colored, but these are infrared images where the grayscale gives an approximate guide to temperatures uh, ranging from cold on the left to warm on the right. So cold is about minus 140 degrees Celsius and warm is about plus 80 degrees Celsius. So you can see here how a cold front denoted by CF is denoted, how a tropical storm is denoted, uh, how a 
um, TRS or tropical revolving storm is denoted and how how are the clouds which are low uh, stratocumulus clouds are uh, um, denoted so you can see the colder the core the whiter is the image all right the more the rain bearing clouds are there uh, you know you get a whiter image and the warmer the core the warmer are the uh, 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 warmer is the core then of course the darker is the image and, and a comparison i wanted to show you here as well is you can see again these are infrared images and you can see how uh, high pressure low pressure regions are indicated here uh, where low pressure uh, have you know high pressure associated with better weather and they will be uh, you know warmer core whereas uh, low pressure will have you know colder core and uh, they are associated with rain rain bearing cloud so you can see that high pressure regions as you can see here are darker and therefore low pressure regions which have lot of uh, rain associated with them and rain bearing clouds you can see they are whiter and brighter in color so this is what i wanted to show you you know how the these are this is a cold front that you, because i'll show in comparison how these are also denoted in non sea level analysis charts you know so what you see here is a, a frontal depression developing on your uh, bottom right corner and i'll show you the same image so if i can show you the next one so you can see here this is exactly what i was showing you previously but this is a mean sea level analysis chart so here you can see again where the frontal depression was de uh, developing where you have the tropical cyclone you see the tropical cyclone monty on the top right hand corner uh, uh, that has you know that was indicated as well the high pressure which is there in the center was more darker in color where the low pressure centers which you see all around were more lighter and more whiter in appearance and again these are these are the way you can compare you can compare the mean sea level analysis chart with the infrared images so if you compare them then you get an indication of what and how each of these features are de uh, depicted or indicated in the infrared images so this will help you to study infrared images and get the information the same information that you basically get from uh, mean sea level analysis chart the advantage here is the more sources of weather information you read and analyze and then you can interpret and apply to the passage plan the safer your navigation will be so i thought i'll make us another video separate video to show you these different images because i think i missed that doing that in the last one where i also focused on water vapor images so i didn't want to make that video too long all right so i hope this was a good video for you to understand how the infrared images work what are the basis of the infrared images and visible images and let me know what you think about this videos and uh, i'll see you soon with my next video guys uh, bye for now and so this is another image before i close so i just thought but uh, bye for now all right i'll see you soon with the next video So again, this is was a comparison between the last chart and uh, which was an infrared image and a mean sea level. So I just thought I'll put up two examples. Although, although I said bye before, uh, just before I finish this video, I thought I'll sh show you another example of uh, how a mean sea level analysis chart can be compared to a infrared image. So use both these examples and just try to get a comparison. Pause your screen, go forward, go back. and just make do a comparison and see whether uh, the things match up or not and whether you can actually compare the information that is provided between these two different type of charts all right but definitely this time bye for now and i'll see you soon with my next video